Hi everyone, my name is Tammy Treyer, and you can find myself and my family at treyerwilderness.com. I just want to do a little thank you to Melissa Norris for allowing me to be a part of her homemade Christmas. Um, she's a great friend, wonderful woman, and I'm just really blessed to be able to share this with you. Um, today I am going to share with you how I make um, my goat's milk soaps that we sell online. Um, and just share with you a little bit on how it started. Um, we live 100% off-grid in the northern Idaho wilderness. We are 100% um, solar and absolutely love it. And uh, during the process of building, um, we moved here to raw land, untouched land, and um, we purchased it sight unseen. And we lived in an 8 foot by 14 foot canvas wall tent for eight and a half months while we built our home. And it was myself, my mountain man, and the mountain boy. And uh, it was honestly the best experience of my life. It was an amazing time. Um, talk about going back to your roots and simple living. Um, so simple that all we had for ourselves was a small Rubbermaid tote that had our clothing and whatever personals we needed within it. We uh, had cots and a table and a wood stove in our living quarters and we had a mess tent and um, a shower house if you will um, but it was an amazing time and it really made me um, think about a lot of things in my life and the importance of some things and not the importance of others you know um, how, how you really start to evaluate things and um, during that time, it just made me kind of chuckle a little bit because my girlfriends would always get me these really pretty soaps. And what did I do with them? I'd stick them in my um, drawers or leave them in the bathroom looking really pretty, but I never used them. And it just caught me really funny as how silly is that to have soap and not to use it. And, you know, the reason you don't want to use it is because it does look nice. Well, I, I was determined... Um, at that point to learn how to make my own things so that I wouldn't be afraid to use such gifts because a gift is a gift and, and something and of course you know when you're gifted something um, it's your choice how you use it but that was just something that caught me really really funny so that was one of my missions once we were in our home and I did it that first winter um, was to learn how to make my own soaps and because we are off-grid and because it was the winter months I didn't have too many choices you have hot process soap making, cold process soap making, and you have melt and pour soap making. Now today we're going to do melt and pour soap and um, the hot processed soap is when you use a slow cooker to um, render your soap down and it's a, a time consuming process. Um, cold process soap isn't nearly as um, complicated um, and, I, and that isn't complicated, it's just time consuming. Um, the cold process soap is actually something I'm going to be offering later this winter in, in 2015 as a webinar. So stay tuned for that and I'll give you details on how you can sign up for that or get more information on that. But um, that required um, constant heat and the only constant heat we had in our home for the first, I think it was four months, was our wood stove. So I cooked regularly on our wood stove, but I was concerned about the um, constant heat and um, we just weren't set up to mess around with the cold processed soaps. I do that now, um, but that wasn't something available to me at the time. So um, the melt and pour soaps are nice because they allow you to mold the soaps into really pretty little molds and different shapes and where the uh, traditional soaps, your cold processed and your hot processed soaps, are not as easily molded. Um, typically you will find them in square or rectangular blocks and not anything real super fancy. Um, however, they are amazing, amazing soaps and I look really forward to sharing that with you also. So today I'm going to share with you the melt and pour process and when I started I had a really good friend back in Pennsylvania who would send me her um, rendered down goat's milk soaps that I could just do the melt and pour process with. However, she had a um, autoimmune disease that took her away from being able to continue doing that um, business. So I had a look elsewhere and the link that I gave you um, 
that Melissa shared with you also, um, is the soaps that I have found to be the best. They are the most moist. Goat's milk, um, the reason I focus on goat's milk is because it is an extremely moist soap. It's good for your skin. I also mentioned about having bentonite clay or kaolin clay. And I use the clays in the soap because it helps harden um, the melt and pour soap so that it's more of a consistency of a traditional soap. Um, typically you find the melt and pour soaps are a little bit more, um, they're softer and they sometimes um, dissipate quicker. So that's another reason I put it in there. But the, the clays are really good for your skin. They are natural um, detoxes for your skin and they are really um, something good to, to um, be utilizing. So um, I do have the bentonite clay tonight that I will be showing you. Um, but I'm going to pause here and I'm going to spin this around so that you can see the varying things that we are working with and um, we'll continue to move on from here. Okay, the space is a little tight here in my kitchen, so I just want to make sure you can see everything. Um, closest to me here is the scale. Um, I gave a link for a very inexpensive scale. It's actually the same one I use. Um, it's a handy item to have for so many things. Um, it is um, available, uh, the settings are um, available in pounds, kilograms, um, ounces. So it makes it really, really nice to measure just about anything. Um, I didn't mention that you should have a little... Uh, cup or even shot glass um, that will be able to give you an ounce or two ounce measurement. Um, that happens to be a Tupperware midget and I know that's two ounces and it has markings on it so I know where my markings are on there. Um, you also have your whisk um, which I believe technically that is considered an egg plunger but um, a regular whisk will work fine. Behind that with the yellow balls on there that is a candy thermometer and then the spatula is a silicone spatula. Now, you don't need, for the melt and pour soaps, you really don't need um, special equipment um, because you can wash these off and reuse them and, and put them in food um, because it, nothing's toxic. Um, when you're working with the hot and cold process soaps, you're working with lye, um, but again, um, at the final process, you actually have uh, done the science the uh, science experiment and you now have soap so again once it's washed things are okay to be used in your kitchen um, but I recommend with the hot and cold process soaps that you actually have things that are specifically for that um, just in case things aren't washed properly so those are the items that I suggested as well as the pouring pot or the um, Pyrex uh, dish or measuring cup you can use either one of those. Um, basically what you're doing when you're making your melt and pour soap is you are using a double boiler. Um, the size that I recommended there, um, depending what you're going to do, I need those sizes to make my um, soaps. A two, that measuring cup is something you can use in your kitchen otherwise, so I wanted you to have something that you, know, you wouldn't have to just have for soap making. Um, both of those items are able to be poured out of nicely and that is important because it's a real pain in the neck to do your soap when you don't have a pour spout. Now, I also have the Melton Pour Soap Base here. This is the goat's milk soap. And I wanted to show you a little bit here of what we can do. Um, right here I have my doTERRA um, peppermint oil and that is peppermint tea. You can always add unique things to your melt and pour soaps as well as your um, traditionally made soaps. And I love doing that. So that's what we're going to do um, today. Um, I also have the lemon with your um, lemon uh, that you can zest and add the actual lemon zest to your soap. I have oatmeal because I love adding oatmeal to soaps. It just gives it a really nice texture. And again, that is good for your skin. And then I have my lavender um, doTERRA oil and my lavender flowers, dried flowers. So those are great to add in. And these are just some of the ones that I do on a regular basis. And I also have my chopper because um, in order to do the oats, um, you could leave them as they are. But I use uh, Bob's Red Mill Old Fashioned Oats and they are really big and hearty. So I want to chop those down a little bit. Now... The other thing I want to show you is I mentioned, oh, and this is the bentonite clay that I have tonight. That's the Now brand of bentonite clay, which you can find on um, Amazon. Okay, well, let me move that out of the way and just share a couple things with you. I put a lot of things as optional on your supplies list because, in all honesty, 
you can be really experimental and you don't need to go spending and get all the fancy things um, that are out there. Um, a lot of times that's what people do and they spend gobs of money when in reality you don't have to. Now, these are the molds that I use for my business. I love dragonflies and uh, they represent just peace to me and that has been something that I've used as my logo for my web design business, for my um, writing business and and then it just kind of carried over into our soaps. So, and they were just so prevalent out here. They are still, but while we were building, it was just something that was kind of by our sides all the time while we were building. So it just kind of went along with what I started. Um, now, I just want to show you some of the other things that you can use for your molds. Here is something simple in my kitchen that I actually pulled off my walls. As you can see here, I have all of my tools and gadgets that I use in my kitchen many antiques on my walls and I pull them off and utilize them all the time so um, that's just what I did here to show you that you can use something like this now keep in mind um, when you're making soaps dependent on what you're placing in the soap sometimes the oils will cause the soaps to hang up in the molds so there is a way to get them out of the molds a little easier and that is to stick them in the freezer and um, that way they will loosen up once you pull them out of the freezer. Um, but I would suggest using something more flexible just in case so that you're not having to dig your soaps out of something hard because um, honestly, I haven't used anything like that, but um, you can, they do sell them like that. So, um, But my molds are usually pretty flexible. So keep that in mind. Um, and if you have problems getting it out, stick it in the freezer and then try it. Now, the other things I have, this is a silicone um, cupcake paper, if you will, or holder. Um, these would make a great little um, soap mold and you wouldn't have to fill it. You could just go halfway and this would give you your one ounce um, molds and a nice little size. Uh, you could even do chocolate with a, you know, with brown. You know, you can color your soaps. You can get colorings. Um, you can use natural colorings. I use coffee grounds and coffee and also coffee beans in my soap because I have a cabin coffee a Cherry Wilderness Cabin Coffee Soap and Candles, and I do that. Um, coffee grounds are actually a really good exfoliant. So anyway, that is another option. You can get a little creative and make little Reese's, you know, cups or whatever. Now, the most inexpensive way to do it is right here. And that's probably what I'm going to use tonight because um, there's a funny thing. I started doing this so that we would have soaps and I would use the soaps. Well, now that I'm making them and I'm selling them, all my soaps are in the stores and I don't have any soap here for us. <laughs> so tonight I'm going to be making these soaps for me and I'm going to put um, parchment paper in the base of this box and I'm going to pour my mold, my soap right on top of that in there and, and then I will cut my bars. So um, my grandmother used to use a shoebox. Um, you can use anything. You don't. You can be very creative. And and giving a handmade gift is something that I absolutely treasure. So I encourage you to do that. And um, I wanted to just point something out. This plant here has been catching my eye all day today. It is just taking over my kitchen. You can only see the top of it. It's going off of my counter and all over the place. Something else you can do as a wonderful gift for people is to take a snipping of your plant, put it in water, and allow it to sit that the roots get really good and hardy because it will actually reroot itself. And then you can plant it in a nice pot and give the gift of one of your house plants. I, I hope I'm not taking over anybody else's gift idea there that's participating in this, but that just was something I've done that before in the past a lot. And I really enjoy, I like watching things grow. So that is always something that really, um, I enjoyed myself and, um, enjoyed giving. So I'm going to spin this around and we're going to get started here. Okay, now I just wanted to show you, you know, you can also use just a regular old double boiler, you know, um, they work wonderfully. So sometimes the size of them is a little too small depending on what you're doing. A pound of soap would fit in here and that would work perfect. So, like I said, you don't have to go buying all these new fandangled things. I prefer less in my kitchen and more um, quality tools and that's why I usually go for the antiques. But um, the other thing you need is a pot. Um, that your dish, whichever you're using, if you don't have a double boiler, you can create a double boiler by simply putting water in a pot and placing another pot into the water and in that pot. 
and it will then create the double boiler. Um, you want to make sure if you're using glass, that's why I suggested Pyrex, that it is a uh, heat safe glass or you'll have problems. You could even use a ball jar. The only problem with that is that it doesn't have the pour spout, but if you're just going to pour it into a box, that would work just as fine as, as, as good. Um, I have the half gallon um, jars and I was going to consider using that this evening. So um, you've got so many so many options. Just be creative and be frugal. Um, so we are going to use this tonight and I'm going to put the pot over here on my stove a while so it's out of the way and I'm just gonna wipe this off because I got it wet okay now let's look at the scale now with the scale you can do one of two things you can weigh your pot and find out how much it weighs and then subtract that from the amount of soap base that you're using or to make it really simple you just place the pot or whatever it is that you're going to put the soap into on the scale and then turn it on because that way it will have already measured that and it'll set it to zero um, and that's what I typically do. Now something else to keep in mind is that um, I already pre-measured this and you can if you ordered a pound or two pounds you know what you have in your um, box. I get mine in bulk quantity um, but this can be placed in here as is or you can cut it up um, so that it's in smaller chunks and it melts faster. Um, typically, I am flying by the seat of my pants through my homestead, moving at a clip, and multitasking like crazy. So, uh, no, I just put it in and I, I keep an eye on it while I'm doing other things in my kitchen because I always have dishes or something to do. So this is, a, it's 1.25 on my scale. And I like going just a touch over the one pound because um, when, once it's melted, um, that exact measurement seems to fill my, my molds very well. Um, and tonight, since I'm using a box, it's really not going to matter. But that is, you, you learn once you start pouring, depending on the molds that you use and what you're working with, um, what measurement works perfectly. Um, in the beginning, you know, it was a little trial and error. Um, those are four ounce bars, but you can fill them a little fuller on, uh, in, on, the, on the mold. So um, it just took a little uh, trial and error to figure out what works perfectly for me. Um, so that's all you do is you can either slice up your soap and put it in here, put the big chunk in here, and the next step is just putting it on your stove. So I'm going to um, shut this off and um, I'll be right back. Okay, now this part is really simple. Um, you just turn your stove burner on. Medium heat works good. Um, if you have it really high, it's just splashes of water around. And um, I just set on the medium heat, center that in there, and uh, keep an eye on it. The next thing we're going to do is uh, once it starts getting melted down pretty well, um, you start checking um, the temperature with your thermometer. So I am going to jump back on here when it is ready and um, go through that process with you. So stay tuned. I just thought I'd jump on here real quick and just show you what this looks like. You can see that there's still a good bit of soap base in there and it's melting down. Um, and typically when my my base has melted, um, I just end the process there. Um, I've just learned... You'll find anybody that has been in my kitchen knows that I improvise and make my own recipes and kind of just go and do my own thing. And once I figured out where things were at with the thermometer and, and the temperature, I just sort of went with it and, and I no longer use that myself. But I will use that tonight to show you. Um, when you uh, check the temperature, you want it to be um, between 120 and 130, um, 120 degrees 130 degrees, no higher, or you take a chance of actually um, kind of, well, you overdo your soap, and it won't set properly, and um, it won't turn out as nice. So you definitely want to uh, heed that temperature and be cautious uh, as you're learning to do this. And um, I'm going to jump back on a little bit and get the uh, thermometer in here and show you how things are going. Things are pretty consistent as I had stated. Um, we are good. I turned the heat off. It's not focusing for me there. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Um, 
I just had that against the bottom, and that's one thing I want to mention. Um, don't put your thermometer directly against the bottom of your pot because it will pull the excessive heat. You want to, to take the temperature of your soap itself. So you want your uh, thermometer in the soap and only on the soap, okay? So um, when you're using your thermometer, that's how you properly use things. This is exactly where we need it to be, and... I'm going to set this over here and move this around and we will start uh, really getting into it here. Okay, this part here is the fun part for me. Um, I really enjoy being able to make my own recipes and experiment and play around with the different um, concoctions. Everything that I have now is something that I've experimented with and really found um, perfection in it. Um, the scents I want, the um, thickness and, and the uh, uh, consistency that I want. So with that being said, this is just the soap right here. I'm going to add in an ounce of bentonite clay and the reason, it's actually three quarters of an ounce. Um, it's okay to use up to an ounce within a pound of soap. So I am just using a little bit less than that. I found that works best for me. And what I'm going to do is take the uh, plunger because this can get thick and it can get lumpy so you want to make sure and that's why I like this plunger type um, whisk now both whisks work fine and one thing you do want to be careful of is you can make it too bubbly and then you will get bubbles in your soap so I want to warn you of that and just mix that in there now you will learn to experiment too with your fragrance um, I don't like overpowering fragrance in my soaps. Um, if you're using a scent, not an essential oil, but a scent oil, you can find them in the varying craft stores and, and such, um, you, want, you can use an ounce of scent to a pound of soap. Now, to me, that's too much. So I usually use three, half to three quarters. Um, and that seems to give me a nice fragrance, one that's not overpowering and overbearing and, and that sticks in the soap nicely. Now, I'm going to use lavender today, and they suggest that you use um, five drops of essential oil to each ounce that you um, of soap that you have. So we have 16 ounces here, um, so I'm not going to use that much. I think what I'm going to start out with is 20 um, drops of essential oil and this is the doTERRA oil so I'm just going to count these okay now I don't like wasting any of the oil there's some on the sides so <laughs> put that on and now I chopped up the oatmeal and I put some lavender in there also. Now, something you got to keep in mind, I'm not going to use all that, um, is that you don't want to put too much of all these things in there because your soap still needs to cure and it still needs to um, harden properly. So you don't want to overpower your soaps with too much. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put three quarters of an ounce of this in my soap and mix it around. Now this is oatmeal and um, lavender so we're gonna put this in here and also use the uh, plunger there and mix this up nice. Now the lavender flowers have wonderful aroma to them and scent as well. I use them in my teas and in my baking and in my soaps and all kinds of things. Um, so. I've mixed this up and you will find that your um, additives may go to the bottom like your uh, oatmeal and the lavender um, flowers may actually go to the bottom of your soap because um, they are heavier. So keep that in mind and um, something else to keep in mind is you don't have to use goat's milk soap as your base. There are many different types of base. There are glycerin bases, which allows you to have the clear soaps, so that if you 
if we were to do the lemon tonight and we had um, zested the lemon and put the lemon zest in with the soap, which is what we would have done. I would have put the lemon zest in with the uh, soap as it was melting down or toward the end of the process. And um, that would have scented it as well as colored it um, some. And then you'd have your clear soap with the lemon zest and then you add your essential oil at the end. You always add your essential oils and your additives normally at the end. But if you're going to use something like zest or something like that from... Um, fruit, um, it, it can be added in there to enhance the, the scent of it and cook it down. So, this is all mixed up. I'm going to um, show you what it looks like. Okay, you can see that it has color and, and um, texture in there. And it's all mixed, melted, and ready to be poured. So, I'm going to um, spin this around once more and show you how I'm going to finish off the soap. Okay, hopefully you can see this. I just took the box and lined it with parchment paper. Uh, you want to try to get it as flat on the bottom as you can and kind of tuck it in the corner so that it goes nice and straight and it's not sticking up in any direction there. And then you just take your soap and you want to wipe the sides down with your spatula and you just pour this in here. And that just, that was the perfect size. Okay, I'm just going to scrape the sides down here. I don't like wasting anything. And the nice thing is, too, if you want to um, get your dish rag in your kitchen smelling really nice, you can stick it in with your pot that you just made the soap in, and whatever fragrance is in your pot will now be on your dish rag, and it smells so nice when you're doing the dishes and when you're wiping the table. <laughs> And again, this is all safe. There's nothing, you know, toxic about this, so you can easily um, wash up your dishes and feel comfortable in using them again in your kitchen. Okay, so now let me just show you. Bear with me here with this camera; it doesn't always cooperate. Okay, so now you can see how that looks. Now, another difference between the melt and pour soap and the traditional style soaps is the curing time for your soap. Um, this will be ready in 24 hours and um, I will be sure to show you the finished product so that you can see how nice it looks. I'm just messing with this paper here a little bit to make sure it's out of the way. But I will show you how this looks and what it looks like once it's cured and um, even show you a little further on how I package my soaps and again I don't have any of my soaps here so I will um, place some photos in here and um, show you what my soaps look like when they're finished and um, recommend some different ways to um, package your soaps. Um, a lot of people with the traditional soaps just put cardboard backings around them or uh, rings around them um, I, I think that works okay with those because they're a harder soap. I like to put mine in bags because of the dust um, and setting them in the varying stores. It just makes it nicer. Plus, this is a softer soap, so it will get nicked up quicker than your traditional style soaps. Um, something else I wanted to mention, and I will show you photos of this um, if I don't have it finished in time. But this is an old flour sack or sugar sack, and... Um, it actually still has the writing on it. This is this one here is a sugar sack. I don't know if you can see that. But this is this is old and these are so cool. And I love finding antiques and things and treasures and the thrift stores and the antique stores. And I happened to get um a hold of a whole bunch of these last year for next to nothing. And I've been embroidering on them and then using these as the gift bags. So I am going to be embroidering holly leaves on this and um finishing this up to use as a gift this holiday season so and for this Christmas so um, stay tuned I will show you what the soap looks like and just here's another great way and simple way to make a decorative bag even just as it is um, special ribbon on it um, these are great gifts and if you know someone that really likes antiques and just unique things I just think this is something really cool so I will embroider that and show you that finished product on that and I will bring you back on and show you um, how the soap looks when it's finished so thank you for joining me and we'll be back
I just wanted to mention uh, two more things. Um, in cleanup on making your soaps like this, it is so simple. I just put everything into the pouring pot and stuck it in my sink. I used the water from the uh, pot that we use as a double boiler and just dumped that hot water in there, put my dish rag in like I said, and um, just let it sit for a little while. It's it, Everything um, easily comes out. There's no scrubbing. Uh, it's very easy cleanup and you're done. Um, Again, I will be showing you and I encourage you to join me um, on my website at treyarwilderness.com. In the right sidebar you and also across the top, you have the opportunity to subscribe to my newsletter. Um, I highly encourage you to do that um, and would love to have you join me. Um, but I will be announcing our 2015 webinar dates upcoming and I would love to be able to share that with you and take you along on the process of doing your cold process soaps which is what we will be working on. Um, I did mention in the beginning about not being able to utilize a slow cooker. The reason for that is because anything that requires heat pulls a lot more power than your other appliances. So um, <clears throat> just to give you an example, I've got all my computer equipment on. I've got a laptop on, my printer, my router, our internet connection, um, I have a light on, and um, my, my iPad and my iPhone are charging, and I'm pulling maybe 100 watts. So that, just to give you an idea, a slow cooker pulls 300 watts. So when we, I started this process, it was the winter months, which are gray. So you don't want to be pulling too much power during the gray months. And we're really frugal anyway. We're very cautious, just that we're not pulling more power than we need to. Um, you see my appliances. They're on my wall. So everything is a hand appliance, hand crank, um, and we don't utilize power appliances. So, And that's a choice, though. That's, that's really a choice, just because that way we know for certain in any situation that we have equipment that will work. So... Um, that is why I don't use a slow cooker. I do, however, use a sun oven um, for cooking and use that as a, as a slow cooker. However, I haven't tried my soaps in that yet. Um, but because of the process and it taking so many hours, um, I just stick with the cold process, which is what I will be showing you. So feel free to subscribe to our newsletter. I look forward to having you join us over there. And I really thank you for taking the time to um, watch this video. And if you have questions, feel free to email me at any time at survive at treyerwilderness.com. And uh, I'll be back and show you the finished product. Thanks. Okay, welcome back to my kitchen. It's a little brighter in here today. Um, it's not very sunny outside, but it's at least brighter outside. <laughs> We're in our rainy season here in northern Idaho, so it's kind of dreary. But um, the soap smells wonderful, um, and I thought I'd show you how this has turned out, and we can slice it and um, just give you an idea of what your soap will turn out like just using a box for a mold. So let me show you this. I'm going to spin this around. Okay, here we go. This is nice and solid. And um, you just might want to, um, when depending how thick you make your soap, you may choose to let it sit a little longer to cure um, and just to solidify. Um, I am going to use just a pie slicer, actually, um, to slice this up. And I'm going to try to get this on film. I might be able to get my mountain man to help me out here. And uh, just slice this up. I'm going to make four bars. These will be for us, so um, they may not be anything super fancy. But um, there's a lot you can do um, in making these things um, presentable and uh, gift-worthy. And I wanted to share a little something with you. Today we had to take the mountain boy um, to help some friends and that particular friend gifted me with an aloe vera plant. And you know how I said last night about uh, being able to gift plants? Well there you go. That was a really nice treat. Um, I needed one and didn't have one and just didn't feel like spending the money. So I love being able to share plants with uh, friends. So that is something that's really gift worthy and I love being able to give the gift of our soaps and candles and metal work and that's what we do. Um, Christmas here in the wilderness is spent um, making unique handcrafted gifts for one another. I'm going to spin this around and I'll show you the process of cutting this up. Okay, 
I was saying, we give gifts to one another, handcrafted gifts. My husband made me a really beautiful knife last year and um, a leather sheath and put a lot of thought into our gifts. And um, we kind of stepped out of commercialism when we stepped out of the modern day and stepped into our off-grid lifestyle. And it's really so much more gratifying and so much more rewarding. And um, I'm, I'm really thankful to be able to share that with you. Um, I'm going to slice this up, and again, as I stated to you previously, you know, I utilize what I have. There are some really nice um, tools that you can get to cut the soaps, and I honestly do have one, and it's in my wax right now, for in my soy wax, so I'm not even going to go fish it out. I'm just going to show you how it's really easy to improvise. We improvise all the time out here um, and utilize... Um, you know, different things for different uses, uh, where they may have one purpose, we, we find many. So, um, I'm going to cut this here and angle the camera so that you can see this, and hopefully this will work out. Okay, let's just move this over here just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is just cut it down the center. And it is solid, which is what you want, so I'm just going to work my way across here very carefully, because I do want it to be nice and straight, even though they're for us, you know, you like to do things up nice, add that woman's touch to the home, if you will. <laughs> okay, so there, we got it cut across, I'm just going to cut it across the other direction. Hopefully you can see this okay. Yeah, I'm sure you get the idea, but I just sliced it across the center here. And now I'm going to do the other direction. And what's really nice with these soaps is, you know, you can package them and set them up and decorate them in whatever way you like. I like using hemp cordage a lot and wrapping things. Um, as you can see, as you saw on my walls, you know, I use cordage to hang things. It's simple and easy to use and inexpensive and just, I don't know, I like the look of old. And, and so I do that a lot. Doilies, antiques, old things, rustic, that's kind of my uh, style. And uh, just get these cut here and I will show you. But these, it really smells wonderful. Um, so we have the oatmeal in here. We have the lavender flowers in here. We have the lavender essential oil. Lavender is very relaxing. It's also good for your skin. Um, lavender is very universal. Um, the calming part I like when we're in the car. Um, I carry my oils with me a lot. And um, when we were traveling to Wyoming this summer, one of our dogs likes to relax. The other one will pace the truck for however long you're in it. And in this case, it was 10 hours, and he was starting to just drive us all crazy. So I let him sniff my lavender, and he finally laid down and relaxed. So now we know on our trips, we do that in the beginning of the trip instead of near the end. But the oils are very wonderful. This is a great way to wake up in the morning washing your face and just getting that burst of... A wonderful smell and remember your oils are um, useful um, topically internally some of them are and um, aromatically so you know you get your uses from smelling your um, wonderful scents as well so I got this slice let me I taped this down by the way because the parchment paper was not cooperating and I didn't want my soap to be too goofy looking um, but a box Something as simple as a box. There is your soap in the mold, out of the mold. And I'm just going to pull this parchment paper off. And when you are using um, like actual molds or anything else that you're popping your soaps out of, it's best to put them on wax paper or parchment paper um, because they will stick fast to the surfaces and it just makes it easier for you when you're doing them. They don't get scratched up or anything. 
There we go. I'm excited. I have soap now. Isn't that sad? The soap maker doesn't have any soap. It's kind of like the cleaning lady who's got a filthy house. <laughs> or a web designer who doesn't keep up with her own websites. But here we go. Now I'm going to just pull this out of here. Set these on here. Move this aside. Oh, this smells so good. I wish you could smell it. I hope you're doing this in your kitchen or will be doing this in your kitchen and then you can smell it. But the edges are a little rough, but they also look unique. So let me just rearrange this camera here. But here we go. Now you can see that the um, lavender and the oatmeal is textured in the soap. And it's also on the bottom. And it's throughout, but you can see the corners. They have you know, the look of the parchment paper being on there. But the soap is just wonderful. And what I like to do is, after I've cut it, just set it out for a little while and allow it to kind of air dry. Um, I would probably wait um, another 24 hours before I would actually utilize this soap because that way um, it's had its chance to really cure and it doesn't start melting, but it's on my hands. Oh, and it smells so good. So I'm just trying to think if there was anything else I wanted to share with you and mention to you in regard to this process, but it's, it's really easy. It's a fun thing to do. It's gratifying and it's relaxing. And then you have the reward of using your soap. Something else that's nice is you can actually um, melt this soap down in a jar. Just put a small piece of it in a jar and put warm water in it and um, melt it down in a jar and you can use it um, for uh, liquid soap too. So um, it's very versatile um, and don't be afraid to experiment. That is something I wanted to mention. So many people are afraid to experiment with anything and this is something where you can really have a lot of fun. Um, the soap base isn't super expensive and like I said if your soap flops you can turn it into liquid soap. Um, play around with it. You don't have to worry about um, anything dangerous happening just that it won't mold properly depending what you're putting in it so you know play around with different things that you like some of you might like the lemon idea with the zest and some of you might like to put um, rose petals in it some of you might want to put the peppermint leaves in it with your peppermint um, essential oil so play around um, don't be afraid to do that I love using the bentonite clay because it does harden this and give it a uh, better consistency for my liking um, it's not a necessity to use it you can just melt down the melt and pour soap and add different things to it when it comes to the hot and cold process soap, that's where it gets a little, um, you can't experiment with parts of that um, because you are using some um, chemicals and they have special requirements. And so when you join me on that process, we'll talk about that. But for this, enjoy it, have fun, add things to it, you know, um, play with the different types of soap that's out there for the melt and pour. You have your, um, oh, I just totally went blank. The, uh, varying types. You have your goat's milk, you have shea butter, you have the glycerin is what I was thinking of. And so you can do all kinds of varying things. You can add varying colors. We're doing elderberries here. And as you saw, even the, um, you know, lavender gave it a little bit of a hue. It's got like a bluish gray tint to it. So, but I would add, you know, elderberry, um, juice to it just to give it a different color. I like using natural things. So, um, those are my thoughts on making soap and just the, the key thing is to have fun in everything you do. So make sure you enjoy doing your soap. Have fun with this. Get your children involved. This is a great thing to do with your kids. Um, and again, I thank you for joining me. Melissa, thanks for allowing me the opportunity to do this. I'm just going to give you a, a quick sweep of the things on my table here. And feel free to let me know if you have any questions of any kind. And again, be sure um, to check out my website at treyerwilderness.com and subscribe to my newsletter. I really appreciate you taking this time and um, you folks take care and God bless.